OK, uh, welcome to lesson two of our series on landscapes and animals. So um, last week we had a, a close look at Notan, um, which is the um, harmony between light and dark or ne negative and positive shapes within a composition and how you can use it as a tool to understand composition in a painting. And really to um, this is really used basically for making a plan of how you will later tackle the overall composition. So um, in a notan, you can pick out the important areas of the picture. So um, particularly the, la uh, the light and the dark areas within the image. So that then when it comes to painting, you're able to uh, select um, or, or, re or recognize those areas that are most important for creating a really effective uh, painting. So I've got a video as well today to show you that I found online, which um, shows how this sort of thing um, has been used within uh, some famous paintings as well. It's only about three or four minutes long, but um, it gives you another sort of perspective on what we've been looking at. OK, so um, today um, I'm going to get you to uh, obviously carry on with the work you were doing last week. Um, because I recognise that some of you won't have finished that, which is absolutely fine. And I expect, you know, you to be carrying on unless you've done some work over this last week. Um, uh, and then the next thing is to choose a new picture, which I think I suggested you do in the um, latest email, um, is to choose a new picture. And rather than me kind of giving you the no tan to work from, which was the really harsh uh, two tone black and white image, um, I'd like you to try and plan and create your own NOTAN and then make adjustments to it as well, which is um, something I pointed out last week too, where you add some white in, maybe put some more darker bits in and so forth. Uh, the thing to remember though is it's not um, a painting in of itself. It is it is a plan, so it can be quite loosely done. Um, uh, and it's it's to kind of, you know, you can kind of loosen up a little bit when you do it and then refine it. And then you've got that idea and plan about how you can tackle your own picture later. So next week, I'm hoping we can start using a little bit of colour um, use and your Notan that perhaps you create this week. Um, if you wanted to carry on uh, and use colour pencils with the drawing you've worked on this week, then that's also fine. So you redraw out the shapes use your notan and your drawing to help you then use colour pencils on it next week. OK, so um, we're going to have a look. Uh, um, so we're going to go over just to remind you of some of the stuff we looked at last week. And I've got also got some uh, examples from our own art class um, from today to show you what other students have done. And maybe so, maybe I, if I can remember everything, I'll suggest or talk about some of the things that they have come across that they've been working with to help them tackle and understand this better. OK, so we'll go over to the uh, wall, first of all. So there's the old definition of what the NOTAN was. So remember, it's about light and dark, um, and it refers to the strategic use of positive light and um, negative and dark. Uh, to create balance and harmony within your picture. So you remember just below here, look, I've got um, I've got the photo, but then I've got the um, photographic. So this is just done on the computer. The one on the right there was just done on the computer, this one. And um, it only shows the harshest light areas and the very dark areas. So overall, our photograph is really, really, is, is mostly quite dark, but we've got specific areas that are really standing out. So the idea of this is that, yes, we could probably work this out, but we can also work out what other areas we might want to highlight within the image to help us uh, when it comes to painting. So with a plan like the Notan here, we can, uh, maybe a more edited one, you can then say, right, well, I know that all the image is quite dark and I know that the head on this deer is quite light. So when I'm shading and use it or using colour, um, I can make sure that these areas are going to be shaded darker or shaded lighter accordingly. OK, 
So um, let's get rid of that for a second. And let me see, I'll bring this one up. So on this one, if you remember, um, I just went, I'll go over this really quickly. It's just um, an image to help you. Uh, so this application of the Notan helps you to create contrast within your picture, which is what we've just been discussing. It helps you to work out how to enhance your composition. So make certain areas stand out better. Uh, so you would take this Notan we've got here on the, um, you'd make a Notan perhaps like this, but then you think, well, I want more things to stand out or I want more things to recede into the image. And it also helps you to understand the shapes at their most basic, in their most basic forms. Okay, so um, that's that, so very quickly. Um, and then I've got the a few examples to show you after this. So let's have a look. So, um, so this first one was done during uh, today's lesson. Um, let me just uh, make sure that I don't move anything else about. There we go. Right, so on the left there, you can see the drawing, which is enlarged on the right, and you can see the photograph. I'm, I've decided I'm going to have a go at this one as well today. Uh, and then just below the colour photograph, you can see the Notan version, which is almost two-tone. Um, so you can see where all the darks and the lights are. And then on the on the bottom left, you can see the black and white version of the photograph. Not quite because I've cropped it slightly. Um, when I took the photo, I didn't do it very well because I was in a hurry. But um, so the version that Jude um, has done here, you can see that um, it's quite busy, actually. She's been very selective about what she's looking at here but that it's very, very busy at the moment. And being selective means, yes, you've spotted lots of light and dark areas, but in order to enhance the picture, we need to perhaps change it a little bit. So we had a chat about this today. And if you look on the neck of the uh, Notan one, which is the bottom, um, bottom right-hand corner, you can see that the neck and the back is, or the shoulders at least, above the neck are a lot darker. So Simplifying this is going to help you understand where the um, where the details are that you really want to show up. So I have suggested to her that the neck and the shoulders could be painted in first of all, uh, and then have a look at look at it and see how that looks. And then you might add it back in a few details just to sort of bring out certain things. So if you look along the neck on the larger drawing. Just where the leg comes down, you can see there's a little uh, halo or a light a highlight along there. So you might leave that in, but paint the rest of it so that then you get the edge of the neck and then you get the, the head um, becomes more of a focus than the body. So simplifying your idea is really going to help you to improve how or where the person will look when they view your painting or composition. So, um, and you can see on, on the Notan, uh, the photograph down here, um, that some areas are much darker as well. So the left-hand side is much darker. So simplifying to a degree, the left-hand side of the picture is also going to help um, draw us in to the face. So remember that a Notan in itself removes the color, removes the texture, and just requires you to look at the shapes and work out where the eye is going to travel when you're looking at it later. Okay, all right, let's get rid of those ones. And I've got a couple more here. My screen went off then, I'll just go down. Okay, so this one is was by, um, by another student in the class. And uh, really nice one. You will have seen this photograph, I think. So there's, it's quite busy, but um, we, we discussed this. Um, uh, on the bottom right-hand corner, the uh, photograph is much darker, but um, she was very keen to make those ripples a feature on the bottom right-hand corner. Now, when it comes to painting, um, there may be a bit of tone in some of those ripples, just to, just to soften it down a little bit so it doesn't look so harsh. But 
um, she's able to recognise that that area needs to be perhaps a bit lighter when it's drawn later. And also the width of the picture um, is something that she wanted to get in. So the banks on either side of the picture where the deer are in the background and to the right as well, you can see that that's been highlighted as well. Now, another thing you can do, and hopefully this will work, is you can also think about framing your image as well. So let's say we don't want all of this and we think that actually it might look quite nice if we change the framing of the image. So um, you could do something like, hopefully, yep, you could do something like that as well. And I quite like that as well because we'd have the deer's head sort of just offside there and then the smaller deers towards a distance on um, the, sorry, on the left. And then as we go into the back, you can see they're very tiny in the background. So you could do something like this with one of your photographs as well. So we've got um, highlighting areas that are interesting and important, and also perhaps framing your picture as well so that you can change the arrangement of things and draw attention to other areas of the picture that you're more interested in. Okay, so that's another thing. And one more, I think. There it is. Grab hold of it. So, and you'll probably recognize this one as well. So this was a really atmospheric image. So um, she started out with just the, if you see the trees going from the top to the bottom and the deer poking out of that tree there on the side. So to begin with, that's all that was there. So it was almost like a very, very simple design. Um, but having looked more closely at the photograph, um, we could see that at the bottom of the trees to the left there, it was much darker uh, and around underneath the deer and around the side of the picture was darker as well. So um, she's added more tone around there to emphasize the deer coming out and added some white on the edge of the tree and the back of the deer as well. So you edit the picture to make it work a little bit better for your idea. OK, so um, today what we're going to do is we're going to be working on our images um, that you've already been doing. And then later, what I'd like you to do is perhaps if you want to choose a new picture and create a new Notan. I'm going to show you that in a minute. But um, first of all, I'm going to show you this um, lovely video that I found. Um, so I'm praying that this works and you can all hear it. Um, let me just make that bigger. Okay, so we're going to go over to the screen. There we go. And hopefully you can all hear this. Nota is the harmonious arrangement of the dark and light shapes in a picture. In Japanese, Nota means dark, light harmony. There's no direct English translation. A well-designed arrangement of dark and light creates an impression of beauty, regardless of either the colors used or of the subject matter. This means that Notan design is therefore the key to a strong painting. Without it, both color and line cannot by themselves create a beautiful painting. Many of the old master paintings have very simple Notan structures and also have very few shapes. For example, many of Monet's masterpieces are just two values. As you can see here, if we convert this picture to black and white. Here we have just dark shapes and light shapes. So you can see that very simple Notan structures can produce very strong compositions. We call this type of painting a two-value Notan. This is a Notan that has just a dark value and a light value. And often this type of Notan is created by the effect of a dark object silhouetted against a backlight. The other French Impressionists learned a lot about Notan from the Japanese master printmakers. For example, in this painting by Degas, we can again see two values. We have dark shapes 
and we have white shapes. And these dark and light shapes make up the whole painting. The second most common type of Motan structure is the three value Motan structure. This structure is the basis of many beautiful paintings, such as this painting by Degas. If we convert this painting to black and white, you can see the three values. We have a dark value, a series of light value shapes, and some gray shapes. There is another example of a three value Notan structure in this painting by Sargent. Again, if we look at it in three values, we can see dark values, light value shapes, and gray shapes. And this simple three value structure is the basis of many great masterpieces. The last type of Notan structure that is commonly seen is the four value Notan structure. Here we have a light value, a dark value, and then two gray values, a light and a dark gray. Here's an example. If we convert this painting to black and white, we can see the light shape here, a series of dark shapes, and then two grays, the light gray and the dark gray. Let's look at another example, in this case, a more complicated painting by Turner. Yet, if we look at this again in black and white, we can find the same four values. Here's the light shape, the dark shapes, our light gray, and our dark gray. So you can see that in studying a large number of great masters, I found that they nearly always have strong two, three, or four value Notan structures. And these very simple structures very beautiful paintings. So um, I thought that was absolutely fascinating. And it's certainly something that um, I've A not come across um, very often before. So um, the thing now then is to continue with the work that we've been doing previously. So you'll remember me drawing um, this and finishing it off last lesson. So if you haven't quite finished that or you want to carry on working on it, please do. Um, I'm going to be working with um, I'm going to be working with this picture today, which is the one that I showed you first from one of the students today. Um, so the first thing I'm going to be doing is creating a black and white version like this. But I'm also going to edit it um, so that I pick out some more of the important details that I want to. Um, so or that are important in the picture at least. Um, so that's going to be something like. Um, working maybe putting a few more there's a highlight on the eye i'm going to put another i'm going to exaggerate some of those highlights and some of the uh, tints around the face and things and simplify keep it um, simple along the back and things but where the light is on the back of the, the deer so to make sure that's in that shows up a bit more um, because i'm going to darken the background down so um Hopefully that will help me or it will give me uh, more of an idea of how to then go about applying some colour to my um, picture. So I'm going to then, once I've done my Notan, I've made my plan of the light, the light and the dark shapes. I'm going to move on to using colour pencils to start drawing uh, this out. And I'm hoping, I'm thinking of a kind of impressionist style for this. Um, sticking to very simple kind of um, natural colours, as you can see in the photograph. OK, um, now the, the, the other thing I meant to say is that in the video there, you could see that there were we, we've gone for just a, a two tone no tan. But um, at class today, there were a few people saying, oh, look, what happens if I put in um, a grey into my no tan as well? So you can, as you can see from the video, you can start to add introduce other tones to help build that structure up uh, and understand what you're going to be working on as a painting or as a drawing and so forth. All right, so there we go. Um, I hope that everybody is um, okay with that.
Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing this uh, drawing um, whilst whilst you're all working, so you can see how I get on with uh, this particular image of the deer drinking. But if you've got any questions about it, let me know. Uh, when it comes to drawing it out, I've done the same as I did last week, which is to draw out my grid. I'll just make these a bit smaller because I've got them in the way. So I'm going to, I've already drawn this out as a grid in preparation for this evening. So I've got my grid here and I've got a, the same grid over the top of my photograph. Now the photograph is a little bit smaller than the grid, but um, I'm just going to be working out from the middle and then any areas like this I can either fill in or just miss out altogether. So once I've done my notan, which will look a little bit like the one I showed you last week. So here's my example from last week that I did. Here's the notan photograph. And if you remember, I, I recognize that some of these areas down here were quite important to me to show the ripples in the water. So when I've done my drawing, I've made sure that they really stand out very clearly. And as I was working on this, uh, on the body here. I also saw where the stronger highlights were on the body and the darker ones were. So when it came to actually shading it, I I was able to recognise it more perhaps than I could when I was working on uh, working from the colour photograph. Okay, so and there's the very loose notan that I did after I'd done all the drawing, um, just to sort of show you how that worked. And here's, and I suggest this is what we did in class today. Is I suggested that if you get a few um, of the images together from online, which you may have done already, you could actually have a little practice at doing a notan of your own. Um, first of all, before you do uh, the main drawing that you're going to be working on. Okay, so essentially, remember it's about making a plan, it's about learning where the shapes are and being able to be selective about what you're going to be drawing or what details you're going to be drawing and highlighting and so forth. Okay. All right. So um, as I said earlier, I'm going to be working on this uh, really nice picture of a deer um, that's drinking by some water or drinking some water here. Um, so the first thing I did uh, with the photo is divide it into four down the middle of the horizontal and vertical axis and then divide it across um, through from corner to corner with diagonal lines and then did exactly the same thing with um, with the outline for a grid on here as well as you can see and then I've started to um, map in very quickly the main shapes that I can see of the deer and uh, the background and reflections and so forth. So um, what I'll be doing um, during the rest of the lesson is looking at this here, which is um, the um, exaggerated um, tones or two tone um, image that I made on the computer. And I'll be adding in um, extra details and things that I think are important to the image. I do actually black out most of it in the end, um, but I just figured that um, I wanted the deer to stand out the most in the whole of the image and the reflection. So I've um, I've worked on those exclusively really to make the whole image have that impact. The um, light areas in the background, um, they will appear in the drawing later on, but um, perhaps a little less a um, little less bright so that basically the highlights on the deer stand out more than the background. So we still have that light effect and everything in there, but um, um, not so prominent so that the deer becomes um, much more of a focus within the drawing that I'm going to do uh, later on. So you can see, I'm, as you can see here, I'm filling in most of it. You'll see that I leave a little bit on the top left, uh, top right hand corner. Um, to show some of those highlights, but I've already blacked out quite a lot of the background here, despite the fact that there's some strong highlights. So I'm already making um, choices about 
what I'm going to be focusing on when it comes to doing my color pencil drawing later. So, um, and I do the same a little bit down on the reflections here. Um, I'm looking out as well. You can't see on um, the Notan photograph, you can't see the, the other sort of leg in the water. So I put that in, into my reflections here. Um, and then I'm working quite quickly around deer to bring out some of those details that I feel are important at this point. So now we've got the reflections and everything in here. Um, I start to refine some of the shadows a little bit now. Um, unlike the uh, Bambi looking one uh, over on the left there. <clears throat> so I spent a little bit longer on this. Although um, I uh, emphasize the fact that you don't need to spend ages on these. It's more about mapping out those shadows, um, those blocks and shapes and things that um, were discussed in the video earlier. So I'm using one of those um, uh, white acrylic pens and getting into some of the details of the highlights and things a little bit more. There's a lot of detail in the Notan that I'm I'm not looking at purposefully because I want to look at the basic, the structure of the picture um, as I see it at this stage. So I'm making a study which I can then refer to while I